story tonight continues to be the airport attack in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, a shooting rampage that left five people dead and eight wounded. Tonight, we're also learning 37 other people were hurt in the chaotic moments immediately following that shooting. This is new details emerge about the accused gunman, 26 year old Esteban Santiago. He is an army veteran who went to an FBI office in Anchorage, Alaska to complain that the government was controlling his mind and forced him to watch ISIS videos. His brother telling investigators that his brother Santiago had recently been receiving psychological treatment. And as we've been reporting all day, investigators say Santiago drew the gun from his checked luggage. That last piece of information has raised serious questions about airport security. And tonight, airports all across the country have stepped up security measures, including the New York area, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Here at home, we're told both Hobby and Bush airports are working closely with police to make sure that travelers are safe. Channel 2's Keith Garvin spoke with a security expert and joins us live now. Keith, that expert is calling for change when it comes to how passengers transport their weapons. Oh, Bill, he most certainly is. And I also want to add that we spoke to Houston airport officials just a short while ago, and they say that there were several flights, both incoming and outgoing to Fort Lauderdale, that were delayed because of the shooting down there. But as of now, all flights scheduled for tomorrow are scheduled to take off on time. But now the focus still is on how that shooting could have happened. It was one real close one next to me, and then it was four that I heard bam, 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 it's like boom. Witnesses described the terrifying moments gunfire that killed five people and wounded eight others rang outside the baggage claim at Fort Lauderdale's airport. They say the gunman was able to reload at least twice before he ran out of bullets. Went up and down kind of the carousels of the baggage claim, shooting through luggage to get at people that were hiding. Investigators say the gunman retrieved his weapon and ammo from his checked baggage and was able to arm the gun inside a nearby restroom, a detail troubling to many security experts. You cannot have physical access to your firearm when you are traveling with, you know, in a terminal with other passengers. Hanan Yadin is a security services expert in the Houston area. Yadin says an attack like the one in Fort Lauderdale is nearly impossible to stop with the current rules, which give passengers access to checked weapons at baggage claim or at the ticket counter. Yadin believes travelers should be able to transport their firearms, but in a system that keeps the weapons outside terminals. TSA and the security uh, administration must find a way that once you declare before you arrive to the airport that you're going to be traveling with a firearm, there should be some way uh, to secure it so you won't have access to it. And security has been stepped up at airports all across the country, including here in Houston at both Bush Intercontinental and at Hobby, but we spoke to the COO of the Houston airport system and he tells us that those uh, stepped up security measures should not be noticed by any passengers tomorrow. They should not be noticeable, so they should not expect any disruptions in their travel. Reporting live from Intercontinental, Keith Garvin, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Keith, thank you. And in case you're wondering, here are the current rules when it comes to transporting firearms on a commercial flight. The gun can also be transported, only be transported in checked luggage. The firearm must be unloaded and it must be locked in a hard container. Take a look at this image from FlightRadar24.com. It shows the number of airplanes that had to wait on the tarmac after landing in Fort Lauderdale. Because the airport was shut down after the shooting, there there was nowhere for these planes to go. Passengers had to wait on the planes for hours. Eventually, one by one, the jets were allowed to approach the gates. But even then, passengers had to wait even longer before they could deplane. And we have this video just into our newsroom from a Channel 2 viewer who is inside the Fort Lauderdale Airport right now, which is still closed some 10 hours after the shooting. As you can see, the airport looks more like a ghost town. You can still see several armed guards stationed throughout the building. Thousands of those passengers are being bused to a cruise terminal in Port Everglades. And that's where we find Vanessa Ariza, a reporter from our sister station in Florida. Vanessa? Well, Dominique, hundreds of people are still out here, lined outside of the port, waiting for their rise. It was a lot heavier with people earlier this evening, about an hour, hour and a half, it started to slim out here. But there's still hundreds of people, busloads coming through. Those buses started coming to this area around 6.30 this evening. Red Cross is also here. They are handing out food, water to travelers. Now, to give you a sense of how it felt earlier this evening, closer to the 6.30, 7.30 o'clock uh, hour, it was coming 
kind of like organized chaos that came through here. There's also a heavy presence of law enforcement along with fire rescue. Uh, we did see at least two people who were asking. And that was Vanessa Arisa reporting. You can find the very latest updates out of Fort Lauderdale, including video, news briefings, and witness accounts on our website, clicktohouston.com. Plus, more information about the victims and the gunmen as it becomes available.